Hi, okay, welcome back. We're looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, section 3.1, the genitive and dative cases. In the last video, I gave you a quick introduction to the sorts of things that uh, Jeremy Duff is introducing here. We looked at the form of the genitive and the dative, and I gave you a quick introduction to the meaning of the genitive and the dative. You remember I said, here's the simple summary, the really bare bones summary of the meaning of the genitive case. If you see a genitive case, think of that thing. If you see a dative case, think to or for that thing. Genitive of, dative to or for. Now, what I promised you was, if you just keep that in your mind, and of course, if you know the form, which you're learning because you're doing 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five, six days a week, um, if you know that, then when you get to a sentence, it will all suddenly start to make sense. I've got here three examples for you, which are similar to the examples that you'll find in uh, Jeremy Duff's book on page 31 and 32. But let's look at these just to give you a sense of how the genitive and dative cases function. Let's go through these one at a time and I'll translate them for you. Follow along with me. Ho angelos lege ton logon to theu. Ho angelos lege ton logon, ton logon to theu. Right, first thing, what's the task here? The first thing you always do is to find the verb. Where's the verb? Da, 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 da. The verb is, can you find it? Pause the video and find it. That's right, here's the verb, lege. It comes from lego, meaning I speak or I say or I tell, but this is lege. So the stem is leg from lego. The ending is lege. So it's lego, legais, lege. First person, second person, third person. First person is I, second person is you, third person is he, she, or it. So lege means he, she, or it speaks or says or tells. So if I'm writing this sentence down, here's what I'm gonna do if I'm translating it. I'm gonna write, um, oops, so easy. He or she or it speaks or says, maybe tells as well, there we are. He, she, or it speaks or says, that's the verb. When we're translating Greek, verb, subject next. Verb, subject, where's the subject? Is there something with a little label on it telling you that it's the subject of that verb. Pause the video for a second or two, see if you can find the nominative case, noun, in this sentence. Is there one? If there is, can you find it? That's right, yes there is, hot angelos. This has the nominative case marker, da -da, right there, and the article is nominative, singular. This is, so I'm gonna write nominative up here, these are my little notes. Hot angelos is in the nominative, it comes from angelos, which means, what does it mean? That's right, angel and hot means the, most common word in the Greek New Testament. So the angel, and we know because it's nominative, it's the subject of the verb. So the angel speaks or says. Notice, and we've seen this before, when you have a noun in the nominative case, it takes the place of the implicit subject that's built into the verb, he, she, or it. If you didn't have that, then he, she, or it would stand in the translation. So the angel speaks or the angel says, verb, subject, you've done both of those, what's the next thing you look for? That's right, you look for the object. You look for something in the which case? That's right, it's the accusative case. Okay, so is there anything in the accusative case? Yes, of course there is. Logon and ton, ton logon is in the accusative case. It's from logos, meaning a word, but the ending is not logos, the ending is logon, so it's logos, logon. Nominative, accusative, that's all right, accusative here, which tells me it's the object of the verb, and it's the, because it's ton, and it's logon, it's the word. Okay, so that's very simple so far. You've got the subject, um, the angel, the verb, the object, you translate it. Subject first, he speaks, or says, or she speaks. The angel is a subject, the word is the object. Okay, all straightforward so far. Now you've got something a little bit different and this is the subject of this chapter and it's this little baby over here. Did you notice the ending of tu theu is genitive singular? Of course you did. Theu. This comes from theos, meaning God, theos, theon, Theu, nominative, accusative, genitive. So what we do is we translate it very simply as God. And we could translate this the God, 
to Theu, but you remember from the previous chapter, one of the special uses of the article is to go before proper names in Greek, though it's not translated as the direct, uh, definite article in English. So probably in this case, we would miss out to Theu, unless it was in a context where many different gods were being talked about and it was this particular god that was being identified. But in this case, let's say it's the living god, the true and living god that's being spoken of, so we're not going to translate to as the in English. But because it's genitive, now here's the key thing, because it's in the genitive case, we're going to write of before it. Remember that's the simple key to understanding the genitive case. If it's in the genitive, slap the word of in front of it. Now what have you got? The angel speaks the word of God. It's very simple. In English, the way we identify the fact that it is God who is the owner of the words that are being spoken is by using the word of as a little label in the middle of the sentence. The way that Greek does it is by putting this little case label the genitive case label. The angel speaks the word of God, and you simply put tu theu in the genitive. Make sense? Now, once you've got that, you then look at the next sentence down. Let's take a different colour to look at this one. And to begin with, it's the same. Ho angelos lege ton logon. Ho angelos lege ton logon. Well, that's the same as here. The angel speaks the word. But here, the end of the sentence is different. To do lo. Now, how are we supposed to deal with this? Well, you remember, this is in which case? Do los, do lon, do lu, do lo. Nominative, accusative, genitive, dative. This is in the dative case. It's singular. And the way you translate a dative is by putting the word to or for in the front uh, at the front of the noun that is in the dative case to dulo well it comes from dulos said that already which means the slave and it's in the dative case which is why we need these so now the sentence reads very simply the angel speaks the word to the slave or for the slave. But most likely, in most contexts, the, the sensible translation will be to, unless it's obvious from the context that the angel is speaking on behalf of, in which case it might conceivably be for the slave. So it makes sense, doesn't it? Initially, you're thinking, this dative business looks very confusing. Then you think, strip it down to its basics. When you see something in the dative case, you just slap to or for in front of it. Then you translate it as normal and then you look at the sentence as a whole, and I won't bother to write all this stuff out, the angel speaks the word to the slave. Simple. The angel speaks the word of God. Simple. Now, here's where it gets even cleverer. Look at the third example. To begin with, you've got the same thing as we had in red here, and in red at the top. The angel speaks the word. The angel speaks, ooh, not quite, ha-ha. What's different about that? Just pause for a second or two, see if you can figure out what's different there. Did you spot it? It's in the accusative case still, but this is accusative plural. So it's still the object of the verb. You've still got the angel, nominative, speaks, verb, the word, but this is not word, this is words, because that's plural. So here, the words. Oh, there goes my pen lid. So here we are. The angel speaks the words. Now, what can we do here? To theu, well, we've already translated that, so we know what that means. Of, because it's genitive. So of God. I won't bother writing that in there, because as we've seen, it's not always appropriate, and it's not appropriate here. The words of God, what's going on here? Tus du lois. Sorry, toys du lois. I mean, I'm reading it wrong. What's the case? What's the number? It's dative. Plural. 
Well, it's plural from doulos, so it means slaves. Tois is the article, which means the slaves. And it's dative, so it must mean to or for the slaves. So now you look at the sentence as a whole. The angel speaks the words of God to or for the slaves. And again, in this case, the translation to makes most sense. So what you've done here is you've stacked multiple cases all in the same sentence. And that's completely fine. In fact, if you look here, you've got one example of each of the four cases you've learned so far in the sentence. The angel, nominative. The words, accusative. Of God, genitive. To the slaves, dative. And you can see how these cases function now so efficiently and so elegantly. They're like, what are they? A little label that tells you what the word is doing in the sentence. This is a subject. This is the object. This is of the thing. You can see duff for the slightly more technical explanation. This is to or for the thing. So it's the angel speaks the words, plural, of God, to, dative, the slaves, plural. Okay, so hopefully that's helped you to see a little bit more uh, how the dative and genitive cases function in practice. As I mentioned before, the simple explanation for a genitive, just slap of in front of it. For a dative, just slap two or four in front of it, then look at the sentence and see what it says. Okay, leave any comments and questions below. If you've got anything which is bugging you, which you don't, doesn't make sense after that explanation, just leave a comment, let me know, I'll try and respond to it, and I'll put, I'll put some more videos up to help you if you need it. Otherwise, let's move on, and we'll go on to uh, section 3.2 next time. Remember, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, uh, five, four or five times a week, five or six times a week, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in a year or two with no trouble at all. Okay, keep working hard, God bless, and see you next time.